Hello YouTube, so I want to do a video on how I use a shipping container to build my tiny home. This will be a video log series of each of the steps I did. The reason for me putting this video together is for, I guess, retention of information for myself and just to disseminate information for you guys. Um, a lot of information online, um, most of it is very specific for what an individual has in their mind. Same thing with, with what I did here. Um, obviously, I'm not a professional. I did a lot of stuff as I went. All I could do is disseminate or share with you the stuff I did, what worked and what didn't work. Uh, most likely, I'll put a um, mistakes and cost video at the very end of this um, video series. So this first video series is, or I should say this first video is going to cover the foundation and what I did. Um, basically what I did was I used a two by two by five column. I did four of those columns on each of the corner of the shipping containers and I used three support columns um, for the middle of the shipping container. And basically the support columns in the middle are made from a, uh, PT 6x6x8 six six post. Um, so the very first thing I did was I took my area of where I thought I was going to want my tiny house to go and I did, I squared it up. So I uh, took my area, put my string, um, basically stringed it out, dug four holes, four of the major holes <clears throat> where my columns were going to be and I uh, basically made sure that when I use my pre-made concrete mold, which which I'm walking towards right now, um, that that would be inserted where the corners would be. And I would uh, insert this in the ground, two and a half feet, three feet in the ground, and pour concrete on the top. Um, basically, you're looking at half my mold here. I used three uh, one by eight by... I guess fives and how I tied everything together is I used four support two by fours that ran across and made made a box tying everything together right so very pretty square I mean the first one I did was it was a little bit off but it wasn't off by much um, I did everything by hand because I didn't know how my molds would hold up if I used a, uh, a cement truck and so I wanted to make sure that I had a lot of flexibility and I didn't have to pay for equipment to be sitting there waiting for me to finish or to fix a box or something. So I probably used about 65 total concrete bags, 85 pounds. Um, obviously put rebar, rebar in the middle of it and poured the concrete from the top. I hand mixed, used a hand sledgehammer to basically hammer all the, the air out and used some of the rebar to poke my uh, concrete in place. So um, from there, I did my four columns. I used a lazy laser level to make sure my height was good from each end to that end. So I use a laser level to make sure that my height was the same on each side and where I needed to cut my post. Now I still had to use shims to make sure everything was, my shipping container was level. There's a lot of reasons for that. One, the shipping container is bent in several spots like this. And two, whenever I uh, did my laser level, I might not have done it completely accurate. I also used a plastic um, plexiglass between my concrete and my steel shipping container beams. And the reason for that is you don't want shipping, uh, you don't want the steel to be touching the concrete. Um, so that's the reason why I use a plexiglass on each of the corners. I also did, I also made my own um, two by two by five columns. I made my own because at the box store, they only, at least, you know, if, without having a special order, they only offered a 12 
inch cylinder. And what I didn't want to do with my to myself is I didn't want to give myself I wanted to give myself as much leeway as possible. So whenever I had the crane come in here and lift the container on to my columns, I wanted to make sure that if I was off, if my measurements were off, I gave myself plenty of play to make sure that I could adjust. Now, you know, obviously me being an amateur, I'm going to overcompensate, right? Just like as an amateur will overbuild, um, I overcompensated. But I did. I actually ended up saving my money, saving some money on you doing it my way versus having to to purchase columns. Now, you know, probably didn't save myself that much money. But the point here is, is always trying to think ahead of. Okay, well, what if my measurements are wrong? Obviously, you always try to, you know, measure twice, cut once, type of deal. But you not doing this every day it is a lot more complicated than what you might think um so in saying that i'm very satisfied with my results my shipping container is level now i wish i didn't have to use so many shims but you know such is life some of my columns you know on the edges this is where a nail was at um, didn't quite get on the, all the edges, but for the most part, my column is holding up good. You know, this column is, you know, at least a eight to nine months old right now. And all my settling has happened and I'm super happy with my results and save myself a bunch of money having to hire someone to do all this. So anyway, just wanted to share, uh, stay tuned for the other, other videos.